in many occasions, the BRICS and BRICS countries have played uh, a role of, of, of you know, exploitation of natural resources and, and labor power. So to say, uh, reproducing <laughs> what we've already know from Western powers. Good morning and good evening to all of you who are watching us on the Zoom platform and on Facebook. After a brief winter break, we are starting another edition of the Intelligence Forum. I'm Paulo Esteves, a researcher at the BRICS Policy Center and one of the forum's curators. The Intelligence Forum is a partnership between the Inside Communication and the BRICS Policy Center, a space created to think and explore new agendas and seek solutions to contemporary challenges. Our proposal is to launch from Brazil an unconventional look at current issues and keep an active channel of dialogue with BRICS countries, Brazil, uh, China, Russia, India, and South Africa. Today's conversation is precisely on the future of the BRICS cooperation. To address this topic, we are joined by one very distinguished guest, Sachin, Professor Sachin Chaturverdi, the Director of the Research and Information System for Developing Countries, aka RIS. As usual, we have along with us the forum's curators, Christian Lynch, political scientist and editor of the Insight Intelligence uh, Journal, and Marcio Scarlercio, historian and professor at PUCS Institute of International Relations, both curators of the Forum Intelligence, Intelligence, at, at <laughs> Intelligence Forum. At last but not least, we have the privilege of having among with us Ana Sajorna Garcia, the director of the BRICS Policy Center, acting as a guest discussant. Uh, today's uh, session will, uh, in today's session, we will have we will have uh, a simultaneous interpretation. Uh, so, if you wanna if you wanna uh, follow this section in Portuguese, you may click in the interpretation uh, uh, button in the bottom of the Zoom uh, uh, and choose to hear this section in uh, uh, Portuguese. I thank. Uh, uh, I, I would like to express our, uh, how grateful we are to the interpreters who will uh, work along with us during this uh, session. So with, without further ado, uh, I will give the floor to, Christian, to Professor Christian Lynch, uh, who will moderate this session. Christian, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Paulo. Good morning and good evening, everyone. I'm Christian Lynch, editor of Insight Intelligence Journal and one of the firm's curators. 20 years ago, Jim O'Neill, a Goldman Sachs economist, launched the acronym BRIC as a way of suggesting the importance of emerging markets as business opportunities. In 206, on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly, the first informal meeting of BRIC countries' foreign ministers took place. The meeting was repeated regularly until 209, when the head of state met in Yekaterinburg and officially launched the BRIC as a group. The meeting was held under the shadow of the financial crisis and emphasized the need to reform international institutions. Acknowledging the, the emergency of a multipolar system, the group presented a reformist agenda around two key issues the strengthening of the G20 as an instrument of global governance, and above all, the reform of international financial institutions. Even considering the mixed results achieved since 2009, the BRICS scorecard was largely successful, considering the G20 centrality for global governance and the transformations within the international finance landscape. Now we are facing another unprecedented crisis. In this context, BRICS countries, or at least some of them, are playing a significant role. To discuss the future of BRICS cooperation, what to expect from India's presidency and the challenges the group will face in the future, we have Dr. Sakin Chaturvedi, Chaturvedi <laughs> the director of the, the, the RIS, RIS. The audience can submit questions here live through Zoom or through the chat on our Facebook page. I give the floor to the guests, 
Sakin, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Professor Christian Lynch. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, context setting. Thanks, policies for, for having me here. And thanks, Anna Garcia, for, for joining us uh, as, as discussant. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as BRICS uh, enters in the 15th year of its establishment, India is providing presidency at a very crucial time. And, and this crucial time is, is uh, absolutely full with challenges, as uh, 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 Professor Lynch has very rightly uh, stated. It is because uh, uh, of the huge pandemic that the world is going through, the inequalities that have multiplied, and also because of huge lockdown that uh, uh, almost all the uh, major economies have faced. And as a result, the GDP sh has shrinked all across. Uh, trade has uh, in a way, uh, 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 been squeezed, and so are the resource flows. And this has pushed countries in a big quagmire, where they are finding it very difficult to, to rediscover themselves. So it has come at a time when the world is facing through a major challenge. But BRICS at 15... Just a second, I, I'm trying to contact him, uh, he felt. Uh, I'm trying to contact him in the uh, scene, uh, whether he can... I don't know what happened, but anyway, <laughs> let me continue. <laughs> Please. So, uh, so, so uh, BRICS Act 15 requires the idea of continuity, consolidation, and consensus. And I was saying that these three terms signify India's presidency. So at this point, when we are rediscovering BRICS, it is important that uh, India, Brazil, and South Africa the three major economies uh, within the BRICS are so much different from Russia and China, which are in a different league altogether when it comes to the global governance. China has its own stage. So, so we should not confuse that we are in the BRICS, so all are at, uh, at, at par with each other. We have common but differentiated responsibilities, <laughs> CBTR, and, and we also have a, a very different status uh, uh, in the global scenario. So the amount of uh, 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 energies that are uh, uh, sort of coming in from China in terms of global governance, the kind of energies that are coming from Russia in terms of its clout and also in terms of their role, Brazil, India, and South Africa are, are somewhere uh, below. So we have to see how a coherence can come in. And I think it would be important because Brazil is a regional leader uh, in, in, in the American region. And Brazil has the heft and the gravitas to lead uh, uh, the region. So is India in South uh, Asia, and so is South Africa in the uh, African region. So we are regional leaders in, in that context. We are also playing increasingly global role. Brazil and Brazil's development cooperation and Brazil's connect with Africa is very important. The role Brazil is playing in norm setting and has demonstrated through Brazil's own social security programs have their own huge relevance. And so is India's role in the global norm setting in uh, reinstating the moral compass and bringing in inclusion and also providing the uh, new traction to economic growth, I think we have to we have to see that we play that role within BRICS. So how Brazil, how South Africa, how India would play that role in BRICS is what uh, uh, Christian Lynch is asking me how that coherence would come in, and 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 my response is uh, very much about that. Uh, the post-pandemic situation is also, uh, in a way, providing huge challenge in terms of how developing countries can really strengthen their programs on uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. And Brazil played an important role in the negotiation of uh, SDGs by establishing what was called as Technology Facilitation Mechanism, TFM, and, and Paolo knows about it. Uh, the, the role that Brazil played in establishment of TFM. India and Brazil together floated this proposal in 2012 and 2015, the global community accepted TFM uh, as an idea and, and it has come up 
as a reality. There are pilot projects already going on uh, since Japanese presidency of G20, and some of your researchers are working with us uh, at RIS very closely, uh, Andre and many others uh, with whom TFM is being explored uh, all across. So I think it is important in terms of the inequalities that we are seeing with vaccinations and, and, uh, and uh, uh, access equity and inclusion that is important, AEI that is important for vaccine, I think is, is important. So SDG backdrop I gave largely in terms of that. BRICS also has to play an important role when it comes to climate change, particularly for COP26. Brazil and, uh, and India and South Africa are very much trying to be on track when it comes to our Paris commitment. We have come together uh, as a force to see how uh, uh, the forthcoming COP26 sets out the agenda and how we bring in SCP, how we bring in sustainable consumption and production. Brazil, India and South Africa have common agenda when it comes to sustainable production and consumption. So that's my third point in terms of how uh, the BRICS agenda can, can, can take us forward. Brazil has also played an important role in health management, India with the vaccine program and South Africa with their new uh, found uh, discoveries in the biomedical sciences is going to take us forward. So BRICS at 15 uh, is, is going to be extremely important when it comes to global governance. And, and, and there again, I would have four points to make. The first is rejigging the multilateralism and, and that's India's presidency priority, how BRICS can reset multilateralism. Multilateralism in all its senses on, on all various platforms, be that WHO, WTO, WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, World Trade Organization, World Health Organization, and of course, the reform of the UN. And that I think is, is, is absolutely important. Second important priority area for India is the digital platforms that have come up. The cost of transactions for remittances, the cost of transaction for uh, uh, the bank transfers that are required with digital currency on rise, that would be a priority area. The third is people to people cooperation within BRICS. And that I think uh, is absolutely essential uh, as, as we are going forward uh, uh, in this area, particularly in the post-COVID uh, uh, scenario. We are also trying to see how uh, uh, the global governance part uh, uh, come in, and I have already discussed about uh, uh, the uh, COVID and health-related issues, but there are also challenges in terms of how access to finance comes in. And access to finance particularly requires the World Bank and the uh, IMF-related uh, uh, reforms, which, which have been installed for quite long. Uh, and the idea of green finance is being continuously blocked as basal norms and their amendments are not happening. Brazil and, uh, and India and South Africa partnered for a proposal uh, at the uh, fund and bank meeting. And I think it is important that the BRICS takes that up uh, as an agenda and we go forward for SDRs and uh, the uh, relevant uh, uh, sections that are important for us. The idea of One Health uh, is, is important that BRICS is bringing in and there the, the BRICS new initiative on traditional medicine is something that uh, all of us are, are supporting and I think we are likely to go forward. The last point is about inclusive social policy uh, within BRICS to, uh, to take forward. Element of this I have discussed in context of uh, uh, SDGs and also in context of uh, our access to resources, particularly the financial resources that are important. So in my view, uh, uh, the future of BRICS is in terms of consolidation of the agenda. And that's why India has chosen the efforts of consolidating when BRICS is completing 15 years. We do not have any shadows of uh, how BRICS has to be content and, and, uh, and we need to come out of the uh, responses that EU and others may require, because if you see in EU, the fragmentation is on rise. Uh, the rightist, extreme rightist governments have uh, been given away with, and we have now more centrists, whether it is Germany or in France. So BRICS need not think in terms of how the BRICS contentment and, and the Western rejection of BRICS 
continuous has been on rise for many years. I think we need not bother about it. BRICS can play an extremely important role provided our minds and, and our efforts and our energies are consolidated and are placed on, on track. My research institution and four other research institutions from BRICS countries are putting together a report uh, for the heads of the state summit, which India would host uh, to suggest what should be the roadmap for BRICS. And, and this report would be submitted uh, very soon. We are in the final stages of drafting it. Next month, we are hosting the summit and we would be very glad uh, to, to, to release this report. Uh, uh, I would stop here, uh, Christine, and, 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 and I'm open to questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sakin, for your so interesting instigation, uh, instigating speech. Uh, I give I will give the floor immediately to Ana Garcia, who is uh, the director of the BRICS Policy Center for your considerations. I welcome you, Ana, to our, our such a smart and intelligent forum as this is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Christian. I thank you all for the invitation. It's a pleasure to me uh, to be here with Dr. Satin that I um, ended up not meeting yet uh, since I uh, got to this post of director. It's been a really heavy uh, six months uh, here with all the, the work, uh, getting everything done in the BRICS Policy Center, but I really hope to be able to meet you soon, Dr. Sachin. It's a pleasure to hear you. You have touched on many important issues for, <clears throat> I think, the challenges that the BRICS countries will face in the context of the pandemic recovery. I think the main question to all of us will be uh, what we will do uh, after uh, the, fact the, the pandemic is over, which is not over yet. In Brazil, we know this very well, but not only. The world is living in another wave of pandemic. I just read this morning that Israel is now going again on, 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 on limitations, on, on, on lockdowns. So this is really, really scary, but still we need to, to think and to, and to exchange with, among us on, on the many issues of, of this recovery and how, to, and how to deal with this. And I think that one of the uh, greatest challenge that you put is the cohesion. So you were very precise when you said, uh, we have, even though we didn't want to, even though the BRICS tried to, especially in the first years, to present itself as a coalition of the global south, pretty uh, hegemonic, pretty much uh, coherent, pretty much together, we do have uh, differences and asymmetries among our countries. And this is very clear uh, between uh, China and the others. So I would put maybe China on another place than, than Russia there, but the whole history of Russia, the Russia's uh, place in some of, of the security issues and energy issues are, is very important. And you have, of course, uh, Brazil, South Africa as, as, as regional powers and India as a major Asian power uh, together. And in many occasions, as you well know, uh, with tensions with China in the Asian region. So I think this is a great, uh, big challenge. So do we see the BRICS as this coalition or uh, we see and try to deal with the asymmetries that there are among our countries and the very big weight that China has, of course, uh, within the BRICS. And the other issues that you've uh, mentioned are really, really important. How, so how to reset multilateralism in those different institutions. And I think that the intellectual property right is one of the main areas where BRICS has cooperated in the past and will cooperate in the future as long as the governments of the BRICS uh, want to. And I will uh, highlight the, the role that India has played in the many occasions in the issue of intellectual property right, be that in the beginning of the 2000s in the issue of anti-HIV medicine, and now in the issue of, of, of the vaccine. So India has been coherent, has played a major role in questioning intellectual property right when it's needed. Whereas Brazil has not played this uh, uh, coherent role. Brazil has 
been together with India in the WTO in the beginning of the 2000s uh, for um, uh, HIV medicines together. But now Brazil has played a different role, whereas South Africa was together with India. And I would highlight um, the greatest challenge that South Africa has, because South Africa is facing a huge health crisis, a huge economic crisis, and at the same time has the experience of other epidemies, other diseases, as all African governments have and all African countries have. And South Africa is really important to keep the BRICS together. So I would highlight the role that South Africa has. Um, one general point that I would make is uh, that BRICS it has to be understood as essentially an intergovernmental coalition. Why do I say that? Because as long as and as far as the governments of the BRICS are willing to push the issues forward, are willing to work together, are willing to be really representatives of the global south in the different multilateral arenas, uh, it works. As soon as the governments of the BRICS want to challenge uh, the US and Western hegemony in the IMF or create a new financial institution. They did, but it has limits. It has limits as far as there are changes in governments, there are other coalitions, there is a new uh, general overall uh, context of, um, of course, the pandemic, but mostly the challenges that the US is posing to, to China. So I think there is a lot of limitations, in the, even in the scope of, of, of impossibilities of cooperation among the BRICS, because it is still essentially this very intergovernmental coalition. It's not far as, of course, not a, a, a regional integration or other sorts of, of, of common integration. I do see a lot of challenge in the big weight and the role that China has played so far. I think if China is not <laughs> willing to push the BRICS forward and to keep the develop, new development bank going, I think the other BRICS will have a lot of difficulties. I do see challenges um, on the ways that many of the BRICS countries individually and the BRICS multinational corporations have been acting in the other places of the global south. So in Africa, in Latin America, in terms of raw materials, minerals, and other sorts of natural resources exploitations. So in many occasions, the BRICS and BRICS countries have played uh, a role of, of, of you know, exploitation of natural resources and, and labor power. So to say, uh, reproducing <laughs> what we've already know from Western powers. But there's a lot of, of potentials for cooperations in the areas that Dr. Sachin has already mentioned, uh, climate change, um, health, energy, I would say. Um, one of last point, I don't want to take too much of the time, but uh, two things that I think it's important. One, in the context of the pandemic, unfortunately, I would say, the diplomatic high level channels that the BRICS have built along these 10 years, be that multilateral or bilateral, have not really worked in the period of a big crisis. I would say that particularly in the diplomatic and high level channels between Brazil and China, uh, as Cosban and others, uh, the diplomatic channels between India and China as well uh, have not uh, worked in the way really to build cooperation and to face uh, difficulties when the pandemic hit our countries. Uh, the NDB though, it's really interesting that the NDB, uh, as the first uh, BRICS institution, did. So the NDB, despite this intergovernmental nature of BRICS, the NDB has functioned as a common platform. So this is very important. And as we know, the NDB has uh, issued this uh, facility mechanisms for uh, COVID recovery. But <laughs> on the other hand, and no one is saying about it, 
the CRA hasn't worked. The CIA has a CRA, which is the Contingent Reserve Arrangement, which uh, was supposed to be a complementation of the IMF, was never, has never functioned. And now we see South Africa going back to the IMF and the BRICS uh, did not, let's say, react in the same uh, level. Um, finally, so I'm sorry that it's taking so long. I think we have so many challenges and, and, and issues to talk about, but I see many internal tensions, but I see also the external tensions to the BRICS really hitting hard the group. So the US-China, uh, uh, rivalry competition, but also let's not underplay that. The Russia-EU rivalry, when the EU didn't accept the Russian vaccine and questioned the Chinese and Russian vaccines, they're intensifying this rivalry and we are not talking in, uh, enough about it. I say um, also a big source of tension is the reapproachment of India to the US in terms of security. Uh, and also Brazil, but Brazil is in a less, uh, in a, another level than India in this place. And, and I see as a big challenge to the BRICS now as an external challenge, uh, the huge asymmetries between our countries and between Western powers and poor and middle income powers, which will be now even bigger after the pandemic. So I think I would, <laughs> Stop here um, just by saying not to be too pessimistic uh, that I do see a lot of, of potentials for, for our cooperation in the COVID, post COVID recovery, but I do see also that we need to think for whom and for what. So, BRICS for whom and for what, let's say, to the people, to our society, to, uh, uh, to go beyond uh, governments and the states. So, thank you. Sorry that I took so much time. We did not took so, so much time. It was very fine. Uh, your comments, I thank you for your comments who were very, very insightful, I mean. Marcio Scalesio, what do you think about giving us your brilliant comments, your bright ideas? Uh, well, I want to thank uh, to the lecture, uh, a very, very, very clear, clear, and well funded, and I have a a, a question: uh, What exactly do you want to mean by banking banking reforms? Paulo, do you want to say something? Otherwise, yes. I'm going to read here some comments. Okay, we have yes. some comments uh, here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you you're getting you're getting the comments. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask one uh, one question that was raised uh, also by by Anna uh, as a way to to emphasize this. Uh, <clears throat> it is about the 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 role the BRICS group uh, played during the pandemic, uh, and the one thing that I missed besides the 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 the, the fact that uh, as Anna said uh, we didn't uh, trigger the contingency funds that were agreed uh, upon in Fortaleza, uh, there was no, uh, at, at least not, not uh, an action that I, I could identify. There was no action in terms of uh, expanding the SDRs uh, uh, at the IMF. Uh, and this is something really, really, really important for middle income countries. Uh, while you, you have that kind of uh, you had that kind of uh, 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 initiative uh, led by the, the, the G20 uh, with regards to least developed countries, uh, middle income countries did not have access to uh, any any uh, any any extra funds uh, in order to enlarge their fiscal spaces. And uh, most of the most of, of the, the poor population in the world is actually located in middle-income countries, and not exactly in least in least developed countries. I'm not saying that the situation in least development development countries uh, should not be seen or should not be a reason of concern, but uh, middle-income countries concentrate a large amount of uh, of the population in the world and a large amount of poor population in the world, uh, and we did not see any kind of action. Uh, within the international community to uh, recover, to rescue uh, these countries into, in, in a time of, uh, of, uh, 
of fiscal uh, uh, crisis uh, in this country. So what, what, what we are seeing is that uh, uh, while we have uh, developed countries uh, ex expending lots of uh, trillions of, uh, of dollars uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, packages, uh, this is something that we can see in the in the U.S. This is something that we can see in Europe, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have we have also some waiver for least developed countries, and we have this missing middle again. Uh, again, we have a missing middle. Uh, there is no no international uh, initiative to rescue middle income countries, and the BRICS did not do anything uh, about that, at least that I could uh, identify. So uh, how do you see this uh, and how do you see the prospects of, uh, of uh, having some kind of, some kind of a coordinated action uh, uh, towards the international financial institutions to create a uh, enabling environment for, for these countries to recover in the near future? Satin, I think you have already many questions to answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Christian. Thanks, uh, uh, Ana Garcia. Thanks, uh, 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 Marcio and, and Paolo Sips. I think uh, very rich uh, uh, points have come up. Thanks a lot, uh, Ana Garcia, for, uh, for being so, so substantive and, uh, and bringing out so many points. Uh, uh, I had difficulty in, in capturing them, but absolutely fascinating, absolutely brilliant. Uh, a couple of points uh, I would try to uh, uh, to bring in uh, on, 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 on the table. Uh, uh, let me bring in the point that uh, Paolo Steves raised uh, at the end, and, and let me start from there. First and foremost, uh, as I said in my uh, initial remarks, uh, 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 BRICS, is 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 not a, a coherent uh, uh, group in the sense that we see the grouping, and I think Anagasia is right. Whether BRICS is a coalition or a platform, and I think she is absolutely right that uh, uh, this question we need to ponder over, and we need to see uh, 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 the uh, distance that is there between uh, what you call as EBAS, IPSA. And uh, uh, and uh, and what you call as uh, as BRICS. So so these two distinctions are are absolutely important for us to uh, to realize how uh, IPSA and Brazil are are related and how they are different. So so when we look at uh, uh, the global governance related issues, and you rightly mentioned about the hegemonic role uh, that has emerged uh, over the years. These two uh, distinctions we, we need to, uh, to, to keep in mind. And I think, Anagasia, you were profound uh, to, to see uh, the uh, challenges that we are seeing both at, uh, with the failure of diplomatic channels, uh, be that at bilateral or at multilateral level. Uh, the standoff that we see between Russia and EU on issue of vaccine is so much evident between China and India. And, and what happened at the border uh, uh, when Chinese troops entered and we had these skirmishes that were there. It was uh, also extremely evident uh, uh, with the Quad coming in and also uh, uh, the danger of losing out Brazil from the south by getting into OECD. All, all those fractions were coming in and, and, and these were the times when uh, thanks uh, Trump has gone and, uh, and, and thanks that uh, situation has stabilized in, in the United States. Uh, but I think it is important for us to see that uh, uh, these stages of economic development also determine uh, the magnitude and the direction of your uh, foreign policy. And that I think for uh, IBAS or IPSA uh, within the BRICS is, is so much true. Uh, had there been a coherent BRICS, uh, Russia, China, India could have recognized each other's vaccine, could have done a due efficacy testing, and would have supplied it to the global uh, uh, world uh, as, 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 as one BRICS vaccine. That would have been so much different. That would have had its uh, huge footprint in taking the world out from the danger. And, and this is happening at a time when uh, uh, China is very much supporting India and South Africa's proposal on uh, on trips exemption. Uh, 
they are very much part of uh, uh, this whole initiative and china is 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 uh, 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 they russia is there they both have supported trips waiver and they have stood by as uh, paragraph by paragraph discussions are going on so i think this is uh, this is extremely important uh, but the contestations are not free like for instance when you talk about ndb or when you talk about cra the essential governance mechanisms are missing india had proposed setting above the credit rating agencies because the cra uh, invoking requires your credit ratings to be established but china bulldozed it and uh, and and we could not go forward in the 2016 summit in goa so after we failed in having cra the necessary element to uh, 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 the credit rating agency the necessary elements required for cra operationalization also disappeared and as a result we also do not have uh, exploitation of resources or labor reforms as as a coherent agenda uh, on the on the brics table there is also shying away from uh, 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 the idea of basics which came up for climate change uh, uh, grouping and the basic uh, had initially shown commitment for climate change and uh, and and bringing in the ideas that that are rel related to uh, to coherent expansion we couldn't do that after uh, uh, rmb was uh, inducted in by imf in the box we lost out on china's support for sdr expansion so individual uh, 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 i think are are important and uh, and we also uh, have to see how these individual uh, aspirations uh, also uh, uh, do not allow the grouping of bricks to become uh, uh, far more uh, uh, effective and that i think Uh, is the agenda that indian presidency should address uh, uh, of a coherent brics uh, a consistent brics uh, a brics that is working through consensus and that i think uh, is 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 important Now, when i was referring to the banking reforms uh, the point that marcio has asked uh, my idea was to see uh, we have been uh, trying to make this point of uh, access to green finance and now the green finance definitions that have come up uh, thanks to basel norms 3 uh, the cost of accessing green finance is a uh, uh, 15 to 18 times more than the normal finance and this is getting jacked up uh, as uh, big countries enter in the market so i think it is uh, uh, important for us to see how brics as a grouping can work with as uh, as uh, paulo asked Uh, uh, at the at the uh, fund and bank meetings where sdr expansion uh, is an important opportunity uh, for for us to uh, to go forward and that's where uh, brics has to uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, the the process but the trouble here is that brics has largely remained as uh, an intergovernmental process as an agarcia officer and this is so because people to people connect within brics has not happened brazil has strong civil society india has strong civil society south africa has strong civil society but russia and uh, and uh, and china have uh, uh, some of the uh, 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 former uh, uh, military personnel or government personnel coming in as civil society and and i have been conducting brics civil forum and and have seen it fortunately now more and more chinese civil society organizations are coming in so until and unless we strengthen people to people cooperation brics would remain intergovernmental organization and if governments go haywire there are no checks and balances in brics to take that forward so if we have to make brics uh, uh, a people driven organization a people to people vibrant uh, uh, organization the governments would have to realize the role that civil society can play and the role that p2p pillars can play and in this context indian presidency is trying to bring forward p2p at the level of think tanks so at the academic forum ris and orf did the academic forum which just got over we also did the brics civil forum and and there is also proposal to have the parliamentarians forum and other business to business uh, uh, forum so these uh, uh, forum would have to all these fora would have to be strengthened they would have to be uh, participative and vibrant so that we are not completely dependent on 
this being an intergovernmental process. So I think this is largely the broad spectrum as uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Professor Christian Lynch, as, as I understood, uh, uh, with, with the three discussions. Thank you. I thank you, Sakin. I will, I will uh, give the floor to Paulo. I think Paulo has something to say about uh, all, all that all the questions has been done until the moment. Thanks, <clears throat> Thanks Christian. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to synthesize the, both the, the two questions that uh, were, were sent to us. Uh, both by, sorry, uh, uh, one question uh, made by Ingo Dietz in, uh, in our chat and another, another question uh, by Shoban Saxena. Uh, sorry if I, I mis, mis, mispronunciate to pronunciate your name, sorry about that. Uh, but both questions, they address the big elephant in the room, which is something that Anna uh, uh, raised in the beginning and you, you yourself raised uh, at the very beginning of your presentation, Sachin. Uh, <clears throat> there is a, a, some, some kind of decoupling from China uh, and Russia, but particularly from China, from the BRICS group. Uh, and, uh, and there is another geopolitical uh, landscape which is completely different, uh, completely at odds with the landscape that we had 20 years ago. 20 years ago, uh, let's remember, uh, we have this engagement policy between the US, sorry, uh, from the US towards China. Uh, the US were, was trying, as you, as we, we always say, uh, discussing development issues, such in, uh, uh, the US was trying to educate China. And, uh, and uh, now 20 years after that, or 30 years after that, if we, if we remember that it started with Clinton, uh, they uh, realized that uh, China became a superpower or is in a way to become a superpower. Uh, so uh, both questions uh, that we have among with us uh, address this problem. Ingo says, the merging group of 20 years ago is so fragmented today that the question is, why continue uh, with the coin BRICS term or the, coin, the, the BRICS group? May there be an advantage in reassembling that group without China and Russia? And if so, and the, you, you yourself emphasized the role of IBSA uh, in, your, in your presentation. So if so, which other countries could join the group? Uh, he's in Germany and, uh, and says uh, hi. Uh, why, uh, 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 from the other side, Shoban makes this uh, uh, question. With a Cold War-like situation between the US and China, the BRICS group faces a big challenge as Brazil and India get closer to Washington, especially uh, on the issue of 5G technology and defense co cooperation. Don't you think India and Brazil are today the weakest link in the BRICS group as their relationship with China, the biggest force in the group becomes weaker by the day. Uh, so uh, I think we have a big elephant in the room regarding both uh, uh, the decoupling of China and the changing landscape uh, with a growing rivalry between China and, uh, and, uh, and the US. Even though I can agree with you that the situation is more stable now than it was uh, one, year, one year ago uh, with Trump, uh, one thing that we may well, we may already say about the the, uh, the new presidency in the U.S. is that the, the foreign policy towards China will not change and perhaps will become tougher and tougher. Uh, so, uh, how do you see uh, the future of the group BRICS? Is there a future for the group BRICS? The asymmetries within the group BRICS. Uh, 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 and uh, and uh, how to deal, uh, how countries like Brazil and India could deal with the increase, the, the growing rivalry between uh, uh, the US and China. So big Thank question, you, Sachin, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult, but, but thanks for your wishes. Uh, I hope uh, we can handle them. Uh, uh, there are two things, uh, Paolo, that I, I hope you would appreciate. Uh, uh, for BRICS to go forward, uh, we are the most stabilizing group that has the potential to contribute for global stability. Brazil in the uh, uh, zone of sphere, which is very important for Americas, and, uh, and India, which is so much important for uh, so many other settings that are important. Both Brazil and uh, India have good connect in Africa, 
and we are also uh, strengthening our bilateral understanding. So uh, we have to continue to engage with China. There is no uh, 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 way out of the situation. And China is also realizing that by continuously raising or escalating the tensions between India and China or with other powers, as we see in case of South China Sea or we see with Taiwan or, uh, or in uh, other regions, uh, uh, including Tibet, I think the issues are becoming uh, far more dense, cluttered and tense. Uh, the idea of global governance requires maritime stability, maritime security, and also uh, the question of uh, 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 the, the, the maritime uh, expansion. Uh, and that's where IPSAMAR and other exercises are, are having this stabilizing impact that is needed. Uh, it is also important how Brazil and India engage with EU, and EU becomes an important fulcrum here, not just Germany, but, but the whole of uh, EU has to play an extremely constructive role. Uh, the disengagement that EU has done uh, on several fronts, but the engagement that EU has done in terms of uh, uh, investment agreement with China, I think are, are some of the indications as to how we are going to go forward. The delicate uh, tightrope walking that Italian G20 presidency has done vis-a-vis uh, Russia, US and China, I think is, is, is the way forward. We need to understand that uh, uh, a new global order post pandemic requires countries to work together. We are going through a very delicate balance. Climate change is having its impact much faster and much more intense than we had ever imagined. The amount of climatic changes that you are witnessing in Brazil itself, the amount of temperature declines that you saw in Brazil and the time, uh, amount of uh, rise in temperature that we saw in Canada is simply uh, uh, mind boggling. And I think has to have huge consideration for a coherent strategy on development, a cogent narrative on development and a consistent strategy as we move forward for 2030. So for a better world, for a better collective future, countries would have to come together. And I think uh, in China also these discussions are, are, are coming up. And I'm sure the leadership in China would also appreciate the role of taking everyone along. The global order cannot be uh, full with hegemonic tendencies that we have witnessed in the past. Having said that, I think it is also, Paolo, important for us to see that this elephant is, is very much within the kind of uh, dancing mode that the rest of the world is in. And we need to see that the elephant really uh, attains the kind of tune that we are trying to play and, and the world is trying to bring in. Here, I think uh, the role of the global institutions and role of multilateralism is important. BRICS has dedicated itself to multilateralism. And I think it is important for us to see that we get genuine multilateralism. You have seen, Paolo, how WTO, how uh, 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 the UN system per se, the Security Council, they have been dominated by the Western powers. And, and they have hijacked the real spirit of multilateralism. But when now BRICS has the chance, we should go above board. And this is a great lifetime global opportunity for BRICS to really play that role. And, and to bring back uh, Anna Garcia's uh, uh, point, whether BRICS is a coalition or a, just a platform, I think we need to see that we are a coalition for better world order. We are a coalition for better global governance. And I think it's important for everyone that individually we cannot go as we saw US and Russia. So the idea of Cold War is behind us. I think we need to work collectively and that global order can be achieved once we have all these different uh, uh, sort of dimensions of multilateralism realized. So if we are not getting CRA operationalized, we need to see the role of the credit rating agencies. If NDB 
is becoming a copycat of World Bank, we need to see what investment we need to make in institutions. Developing countries, South has been a demand dior all this while. Now the opportunity when it has come to build institutions, BRICS really would have to rediscover itself in terms of building global public goods in form of new institutions. So BRICS has to evolve a strategy to create their own institutions as per their philosophy and their ideas. And that requires huge deliberations. I think the academic community would also have to come forward in terms of new ideas for how BRICS countries can really do institution building. Unfortunately, when we decided to go for BRICS Development Bank or New Development Bank, we just borrowed ideas from uh, Western scholars, how they did World Bank, and we just created NDP. We need to create institutions which are sensitive to Southern principles of South-South cooperation. And, and if South-South cooperation sensitivities are to be protected, we need to see how new institutional framework would come up from BRICS. And that requires rediscovering ourselves, rediscovering the ethos, norms, and values for which BRICS stands. And that's where the idea of alternative philosophy, which China has been talking about, Russia has been talking about, India, Brazil, South Africa have talked about in their presidencies, time has come to walk the talk, and we should do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sachin. Um, I would like to ask if Anna would like to say something else. Uh, I, I, I hope you do. I've, uh, I, I'm sure you will. <laughs> uh, okay, just a few words. Uh, first, uh, thank, for, thank you all for all the questions and the really good and important points that uh, Sachin has made and, and Paolo has made. Um, I wanted to just make a brief comment on the IMF. Um, I think that's the, maybe the prize Paolo, to play the game with the other players' rules, right? So we are playing the game of the world market, but we didn't make those rules. We we're playing by the rules made before the BRICS even existed and all of this. Um, and that's exactly the effect and the result of um, the- And, the, and the, if, if I may, Anna, and the problem is the rule makers, the, the, the ones who made the rules are not playing by their rules. That's, yeah. the, that's the other <laughs> Yeah, that's the other, the other part of it, yeah. Uh, but just to, to make a correction to your point, Brazil just got an SDR uh, credit now, just a few weeks ago. But the main point, I think, to the IMF, it's uh, the limitations that, were achieved that the, the, the positive and advantage points of the reform of 2015, but also the limitations of it. Because first, yes, the BRICS countries, besides South Africa, because South Africa was an exception, got uh, more voting power. But at the cost of losing voting power to other uh, developing poor countries. So South Africa lost, Venezuela lost, Nigeria, I think other African countries, they lost in that reform, whereas China, Russia, Brazil, and India got more voting powers. But more important than that, that that's my point, uh, these uh, increasing voting powers didn't change any of the rules that the IMF has used to do the borrowings and lendings that it did before 2015. So you have the case of Argentina, the biggest borrower of the IMF uh, three years ago, Angola in Africa. You had even a few years before the, uh, the, the, the Greece, the Greece uh, crisis. So I think that the, you know, the main point in this IMF uh, discussion is how the BRICS will be able, if they want to, to uh, question and, and reform uh, those rules. And the other side of the coin is what Sachin was saying, how to build our own institutions and play by our own rules that really attend and serve South-South interests and development interests. Uh, the other questions very quickly to the role of China. Uh, it's really interesting because there's no way out. <laughs> you either deal with China as a threat, as some are dealing with, or you deal with China as an opportunity, and then you do cooperate, and then you try to advance uh, the issues that you can do together. 
But uh, uh, the main point is right now, the way uh, that things are in terms of trade, in terms of, of, of technology power, China is a major player. China uh, has uh, within the BRIC, the BRICS, um, a role of you know a power. So the division of labor in terms of trade within the BRICS is very uh, significant. So all the BRICS countries, except for India, India is a different part there. They export raw materials to China, major raw materials, and they import uh, technological products. They all have a great um, uh, trade balance with, with China, except for India, uh, which has uh, less, a bit, bit more uh, uh, um, balanced trade with China. I think the main issue will be finance and the capacity of China to uh, gradually work without the dominance of the dollar, which is really difficult. This is a long way to run. Uh, and the other critical issue is security. So the US still has you know, the, the biggest security power, the military powers. China is, is catching up, but it's still very difficult. And as uh, some of the questions have pointed, you know, these um, uh, approachments and, and security issues between India and the US will be a difficulty for China in the Asian region. But I think I'll stay here. Thank you. Uh, we oh. have. Oh, oh, no, you can you can answer if you if you like. Thank you, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, Kristen. Uh, thanks, and I think very important uh, uh, observation you have made. And I think uh, uh, if we recall uh, uh, the sort of uh, uh, challenge that that came up uh, uh, for uh, uh, for Argentina, uh, the uh, uh, the share that uh, uh, Argentina has uh, uh, in the uh, IMF, the current quota. It is only uh, uh, 0.67%, and and that gives them only uh, uh, something like 4.4 billion dollars uh, 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 worth of uh, SDRs, which are which are uh, sort of direct uh, entitlement. Uh, but uh, the discussions have been on uh, uh, for last four months of something like 45 billion dollar debt to uh, or to the fund, and that I think is is important for us to realize that IMF has only. Uh, 650 billion dollars right now to give away to countries uh, which are facing uh, facing huge crisis after uh, uh, the pandemic so so we need to see as as paulo rightly observed expansion of the sdrs and and that way we needed support from us and uh, and china and that has not happened so so uh, so we need to see how responsibly all brics countries contribute and and they contribute in terms of uh, not uh, enhancing the indebtedness that uh, that has got multiplied, but also help countries to manage the fiscal uh, space constraint that they are going through. And this is, uh, uh, and I think, uh, uh, absolutely important observation that you have made that we need to see how BRICS as a as a cogent, coherent group brings in uh, global governance that is needed. So, so we need to see uh, uh, not to. Uh, 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 view China as a as a separate entity, but see how they can be co-opted in the process, and the sense of ownership goes up. But we need more talking among the group members to to see how best to engage. And I think Brazil and India, and and also South Africa can do more talking. The IBAs can do more talking as to how uh, the rest of the South uh, may also get together uh, for better engagement with China and better engagement with. With the United States for for good governance, EU of course, as I have been emphasizing, is an important actor. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Christian. Hey, uh, Paula. I think we have still uh, two questions here. One from Vinicius Roland and another from Ingo Dietz. I think I may I may read them to so to Sakin. Okay. The first, uh, Ingo says again. Um, Bypassing the inter intergovernment channel may be important. It was referred to civil society. The other leg may be industry associations. It would be great to identify a common project of global significance, like the missed opportunity with a BRICS COVID vaccine. What could be that project? Uh, is this what, one question? 
And there is another word from Vinicius Roland. Building up on the consideration regarding the effects of US-China dispute for BRICS, I'd like to ask the researchers the following question. Could Brazil, India, and South Africa endeavor a mediation between Russia and China, on the other hand, and the United States on the other? Furthermore, as China frequently behaves as a, as a AOD-like agent, and the US acts according to North-South cooperation, could such Brazilian, Indian, and South African mediation work as a liaison, a liaison, <laughs> between the traditional North-South relation and the South-South cooperation? You are free to answer if you, if you like, Sakin, if you think it's pertinent. May I, 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 I add one question, uh, Christian? I think it's uh, related to, to uh, Ingo's question. What is the status of, uh, of the, the, the vaccine uh, R&D facility that BRICS uh, uh, announced or, or, or start to discuss? Uh, so what is the status of that such in, uh, and uh, or how do you see the prospect of, uh, of uh, deepening the cooperation in, uh, in, the, in the, the field of vaccines? Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Paolo. Thanks, Christian. I think uh, uh, let me just bring it to your attention. Today, uh, we also had uh, uh, the IPSA, IBAS Academic Forum beginning, and we had uh, uh, your ambassador, uh, Andre Simas uh, Magalas, uh, 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 who is uh, uh, the Sherpa for, uh, for IBAS process. Uh, and uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Andre Simas uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, IPSA brings in the coherence that is needed in our thought process. And this, I think, is, uh, is important because there are several uh, initiatives which uh, Brazil and, uh, and uh, India and South Africa can together do. And, and that, I think, is, uh, is important in terms of how we look at the requirements that uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, BRICS has to do. So if there is one uh, project that I would like uh, uh, BRICS to do uh, is definitely to see how we can expand the fiscal space, the, the financial heft uh, in the management of the post-pandemic crisis developing countries are facing. In my view, BRICS should revisit the global financial architecture. They should revisit the global norms, and I, I emphasized on Basel norms. They should see how fund and bank can play an important role, and also whether BRICS own facilities, be that uh, uh, CRA or NDB, are actually helping the sum. That's that's way uh, a BRICS has to play. So some project or initiative should quickly be launched to see that developing countries are out because see uh, the pain and the agony of the South has multiplied in the post pandemic period. The exports have declined, imports have gone up, purchasing power has declined, uh, the inequalities have gone up. So, so what role BRICS can really play is to be thoroughly analyzed and viewed. And from that point of view, I think uh, for a better BRICS, a coordinated IPSA is very important. Let me repeat, for a better BRICS, a coordinated IPSA is very important. A coordinated IBAS is very important. India, Brazil, South Africa are democracies for development. And democracies reflect the vibrance of civil society, the plurality of our cultures and civilizational connections. And that I think requires better coordination, understanding of the regional dynamics. And we can bring in because democracies essentially bring in those points. So it is important for us to see how IBAS can really play an important role to enhance effectiveness of BRICS. And, and that's what we should do. The IPSA Development Fund which UN Office on South-South Cooperation is implementing, you see the amount of projects they have implemented in the South. And what are we contributing? Initially $1 million and for last three years, $2 million. 
and we have benefited 44 least developed countries in their social economic infrastructure. The project amount is just $38 million, but we have benefited those countries. So IBAS has the scope, bandwidth, and commitment to, to provide that traction. So in my view, if one idea has to come up from BRICS, it should be about supporting the global financial architecture to benefit all the developing countries as they cope up with the huge fiscal constraint in the post-pandemic times that they are going through. And, and, and that also applies, Paolo, to your own point in terms of uh, how this is to be sequenced. And that sequencing is what just now I have spoken. Thank you. Thank you, Sakit, for all your patience to answer all these questions. They are very complicated ones. Uh, it's almost a massacre here. My dear Master, would you like to add something? No, I'm fine. <clears throat> I'm uh, learning a lot uh, today. Uh, thank you. Yes, we are learning how ignorant we are, we both. Uh, what Indeed. about... <laughs> what about Paulo? I think there is no further questions here. I don't think so. Yes, I uh, just before we, we close our curtains, uh, let me uh, thank thanks Sachin for my dear friend Sachin. Uh, for being here with us, along with us. Uh, we know that it is late in, uh, in, uh, in Delhi already. So thank you for, for your kindness, uh, Sachin, for sharing uh, uh, all your knowledge uh, with us. And also uh, to greet our friends uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the audience. Uh, Gelson Paulo Buz is there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know that Paulo probably was expecting a, 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 a for, is expecting a further discussion on the, the issue of vaccines, uh, uh, and we do hope that we can uh, uh, engage uh, with that uh, agenda uh, in the near future. So thank you very, very much, Sachin, for your kindness. Thank you. Thanks, Paulo, for inviting me. Thanks, Christine, for... Uh... Uh, leading us, and thanks, Ana Garcia and Marcio, for your very, very kind comments. Very substantive discussion. Thanks a lot. We thank you for coming. We thank Ana Garcia for coming also. It was, a, uh, I think, a, a remarkable meeting here. We have, as I told you, I, I learned a lot. I think Marcio also from you three. And uh, I hope to see you in the very next future, uh, in the next meeting of our forum here. The, the, our intelligence forum. Uh, I thank the audience. I thank all who came here to see us. And as I told you, to, hope to see you very soon. Have a good evening or a good uh, a good day, a good morning, uh, wherever you are. <laughs>